Hi, and welcome to the second part of my implementation of CS50 Finance. Today, I'm going to show you how you can implement the quote page. As you can see here, it is a relatively short and easy one, so let's directly read it and start solving it. Complete the implementation of quote in such a way that it allows a user to look up a stock's current price. Require that the user input a stock symbol, so we have um, a text field here whose name is symbol. Submit the user's input via post to quote and the odds are that you want to create junior templates quote HTML and quoted HTML. When a user visits quote via get, render one of those templates inside of which should be an HTML form that submits to quote via post. In, re in response to a post, Quote can render that second template embedding within it one or more values from lookup. Okay, so as you can see here, I have already exported my API key. In case you haven't, you can read it here on the, this page. Um, there are some instructions here, or you can go back to my previous video where I think I showed that, but it is very easy to do it. And I, I'm just going to do flask run to open my app. There we go, let me actually create a registration. Okay, good. The first thing we would like to do is to check if our method is get or post. The reason is that depending on our method, we want to render two different templates. If our method is get, it only means that we would like to render our form, which is going to be in the, in the quote page. If our method is post, it means that we have already filled in the field and we want to check the price and we want to send a post request and render our quoted template. So the way we can check which one we have got is by, by having an if statement, if request method equals post. You want to do pass for a second and else if it gets what d would we like to do well we want to render our quote page so return render template and here we want to do quote html so if you don't if you're not aware this is the way we can obtain our method by doing request dot method and if it is post, we'll see what we're going to do in a second. But else, if we have a get method, we want to render our quote HTML template. We want to render it and see what's inside of it. So now the next logical step is to create that template. So let's go to templates, new file, quote HTML. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to copy this from login and change only the parts that need any changes because it is it is kind of long, not very long, but you can do that by yourself if you want. I'm just going to replace login with quote. I'm going to send this form to quote again, not to login. And um, let me check here. I actually think, yeah, I only need one field here, which is name, uh, which is symbol. <laughs> the name should be symbol. So let me remove this div here, not the button, only the div. And the name should be symbol. The placeholder, let's use stock symbol or symbol, only symbol is good as well. The type should be text as well. Okay. And here I just want to change that to quotes. Okay. Now let's actually try to go to quotes and see what happens. Um, it requires logging in. Okay, so I kind of forgot what what I used here. Okay, so stock symbol. Let's. Well, well we cannot do anything right now because we haven't implemented the post parts. But yeah, we can see this text field called stock symbol, and we can see our quote button. So now let's go to the post part. So if our request method is post, the first thing we would like to do is look at what 
sampled user has entered in this field here, right? Because this way we're going to know what to look for. So let's do sample equals request form get and here we need to enter the name of the field. So if we go here, our name is symbol and we need to enter the same thing here. So this basically means take the request that has been sent, go to the form there and get the value of the field whose name is symbol. So it doesn't really matter what user has entered, it's going to return this value. Now, one thing that we have to think about here is that the user may have tried to skip that and may have left our input field blank. So if this has happened, we want to return an apology, right? And say something like, um, please enter symbol. So let's do if not symbol, if we don't have a symbol, we want to return an apology, which says, please enter a symbol. All right. Otherwise, if we do have one, we want to look for a particular item, looking by uh, searching by the symbol, and we want to get the name, the price, etc. So, for this purpose, we are going to use this helper function, which has been um, prepared for us, which is called lookup, and it is in the helper's pi file. If you wonder, so what it does is it is it takes a symbol. And if it is valid, it returns its name, its price, and the symbol itself. So let's go here and declare a new variable, which is going to be called item or stock, or it doesn't really matter. So item equals lookup of symbol. We're going to pass the symbol that. So basically, what happens here is we write something. I'm not going to send that yet because we haven't finished, but. And this symbol, we are obtaining it here and we are assigning it to this symbol variable. And then we want to go to lookup and pass the symbol in order to actually obtain more info about it. Now, one more thing we should check here is if we have our item, because it is possible that the user has misspelled the symbol or something like that. And in this case, we want to return an apology again, right? So return apology invalid symbol or please enter a valid symbol. It doesn't really matter. And now if we have a valid item, what we would like to do is we would like to render. Uh, so return render template our quoted HTML template. So let's go and create that. So template new file, quoted HTML. And I'm actually going to copy this thing, even though we are not going to need a form anymore. We don't need a form. I'm just going to add one paragraph here. Uh, let's do quoted. And here, P. And we would like to write, for instance, a share or one share of, and here I'm going to write the name. So item name. Uh, I hope you know that the curly brackets are used in order to insert a variable in here. So it is not literally going to be item name, but it is going to replace to be replaced by whatever value item name has. And cost. We want to do item price. For now, it's that. I think this is fine. But now maybe you ask, well, where does this item come from? So this is a good question. And let's go back here to applications pie. So if we only do quote, if you only render quoted HTML, you're right that this file here isn't going to know where this item comes from. So we have to write that explicitly here. And we're going to pass a second argument, which is going to be item equals item. Now, this may seem a bit confusing, item equals item, but basically you can write whatever you want here. If you just stop here, this is basically the name of the variable that is going to be sent 
to this quoted template. So you should have stock here as well. Let me return to item. I just wanted to explain that. And the second variable here is the one that you have pre-declared when you have used the lookup function. So I hope you understood this part because it seems confusing to most of the students, but it is not complicated at all. Okay, so once we have that, we can actually try to write apple and see what happens, um, but without the E. Ah, they want me to log in again. Right, apple. So a share of Apple Inc. costs 134.32. Well, this seems fine, but this doesn't look like real price, right? There are no dollars and it is a bit confusing. What that? What is that exactly? So I want to show you something interesting here, which is probably not the, not, not the best approach, but I just want to show you how flexible Python and Flask are. So there is an interesting thing here. You probably know that here in helpers pi, you have this function called USD. So you, you basically pass the price here and it returns it but, but, but formatted this time with dollar sign and all this stuff. So you know that it has already been imported into application file so we can access it and we could use it here to do something like price like equals item price in USD of item price. But I want to show you something interesting. What you can do is you can actually pass this function from here to your template and you can use your USD function in your HTML file. I find that really interesting personally. It's not very recommended to use functions in HTML, but I just want to show that to you because you all know the easier way, like not easier, this is easy too, but you all know the trivial way to do that. So I just want to show you this. So let's go back here and pass USD equals USD because this is the name of the function. But again, you can call that something else. Actually, I'm going to call that USD function just so, so that you can understand this part. So we have USD, which is imported up at the top somewhere here. I'm not going to look. Oh, there we go. USD. It is importing from helpers. And now that you have it, you can import it and basically send it to quoted HTML. And here you can do USD function because you ha we have renamed it of item price. So let's see what happens now. If we refresh, we have to log in again, go to quote, Apple, and there we go. We have our formatted price. I found that really interesting personally, but, it, but if you prefer the other way, it's totally fine. Okay. So I don't think there's anything else to do here. I think that's all. We have both of our quotes and quoted templates. We have rented them, we have post get, we have all, our, all of our if statements here to check if something is invalid. So that was everything for the quote part. It was quite easy. I hope my solution has been helpful to you. And the next time we're going to continue with our by function, which is actually a lot more complicated. So bye for now and see you next time.